Beaver wants to join two meadows, but the meadows hate each other as they can't weld to one another. Beaver needs a special process. Beaver needs explosion welding. What is explosion welding? First discovered in World War I, where soldiers noticed artillery fragments embedded onto armored vehicles. These fragments were actually welded to it, caused by the extreme compressive forces of the explosion. This special process was later developed and named explosion welding. Explosion welding is a solid state welding process, largely used for cladding processes, which is the process of joining two dissimilar metals by extruding, pressing, or rolling the metals together. This also includes exploding. But how does it work? Process procedure. The metal faces are cleaned prior to welding. No rust or deformation is allowed. The base plate is then supported on the anvil to prevent distortion. The flyer plate is then put on top of the base plate with a standoff distance depending on the weld. The buffer plate is then placed to protect the flyer plate from any damage. Lastly, the prepared explosives are set in a box-like structure with a detonator connected to one of the sides. Triggering the detonator causes an extreme wave of pressure. This wave forces the flyer plate to accelerate into the base plate, creating a jet that cleans the surface contaminants and helps to form the plates plastically, forming a metallurgical bond between the two metals. This bond is stronger than the parent metal. However, some defects may occur, like deformation and chipping. To fix this, the piece is rolled, trimmed, and tested before application use. An example of this process being used is by NASA. During the 2024 Ramfire project, explosion welding was used to join Inconel 625 to aluminum 6061-T6. The welded piece was used to transition the aluminum nozzle to the stainless steel fittings. This special process provided the strongest and most reliable bond for the extreme conditions of the rocket. Process components and terms. Detonator. The detonator initiates the explosion. A blasting cap is typically used. Explosives. The explosives are placed on the buffer plate or flyer plate. The explosives can be TNT, ANFO, RDX, and PETN. Buffer plate. The buffer plate sits between the explosives and the flyer plate. It is typically made from steel, aluminum, or plywood. Flyer plate. The flyer plate, also called the clad, is the metal that welds to the base plate. Typical metals include aluminum, titanium, and copper, as they are lightweight with low tensile strength. The flyer plate can also be positioned parallel or at an angle to the base plate, depending on the weld. Base plate. The base plate is the metal that receives the weld. Typical metals include steel, stainless steel, and in canal. The base plate must have a higher tensile strength than the flyer plate, to ensure a strong weld. Anvil. The anvil, or backer plate, supports the base plate during welding. It is usually made of steel or reinforced alloys. Standoff distance. The gap between the two plates. The distance is determined by the thickness of the flyer plate. For thin plates, the distance is double the thickness. For thick plates, the distance is equal to the thickness. Velocity of detonation. The speed of the shockwave within the explosion. The velocity depends on the explosive type and density. Interface. The connection point between the flyer plate and base plate. Wave formation. The wavy patterns at the interface, caused by the velocity of detonation and jet. It typically looks like a sine wave curve. Jet. The high-speed stream of metal expelled from the interface during collision. Process variables and weld quality. A good weld has an even interface with no cracks or voids. To achieve this, explosion welding depends on three primary variables. Standoff distance. The standoff distance controls how far the flyer plate travels before impact. If the distance is too small, the bond is weak and incomplete. If too large, the interface may become irregular, causing poor wave formation. Additionally, setting the collision angle changes the standoff distance. Too shallow can leave unbonded areas, while too steep can cause edge damage and rough waves. Velocity of detonation. The velocity of detonation sets the speed of the flyer plate. Low velocity prevents proper jetting, leading to voids or incomplete bonding. 
while high velocity can erode surfaces or create cracks, reducing joint reliability. Explosive quantity. The explosive quantity determines shock pressure and duration. Too little results in weak bonds and low shear strength. Too much can deform plates or produce irregular waves. Additionally, the way the explosives are set off matters. Depending on the piece size, the explosives can detonate all at once or in a wave, affecting the wave formation and interface. Other variables that fine tune the process include surface preparation, removes oxides and dirt, so the metals fuse with contaminants, standoff devices, holds a consistent gap, preventing soft spots or uneven bonding, metal overhang and sizing, extra bonded area at the edges, reducing weak spots, preheating, lowers residual stresses and helps desimilar metals bond without cracking, detonator placement, keeps the wave front smooth, avoiding gaps or overlaps, explosive containment, directs the blast energy, improving wave formation and reduce edge defects. Advantages of explosion welding can weld large metal pieces in an instant, useful for pressure vessels and heat exchangers, can weld similar and dissimilar metals, over 260 documented combinations. The welded metals keep their mechanical properties since there's no melting, stronger than the parent metal, useful for transitional joints, compact, portable, and easy to maintain, unless you're this guy. But still, explosion welding has its limitations. One of the biggest concerns of explosion welding is safety. The process demands proper training, licenses, and equipment, along with strict government regulations to even handle and use the explosives. The process also needs a dedicated facility and a large plot of land for safety and setup, making the overall process very expensive. And depending on the piece size and material used, the cost can range from 10000 to over a million dollars per piece, making it impractical for small manufacturing shops and dads working in the garage. Some other limitations include limited joint design, noise pollution, and material restrictions. Closing remarks. Explosion welding is a solid state process used for all kinds of applications. By carefully controlling three primary variables, we can create incredibly strong bonds between a variety of different metals. This process does have its limitations though, and it demands strict safety procedures, which makes it expensive and non-conventional. But despite that, explosion welding is still the bomb. Please subscribe. Thank you.